Welcome to Not Your Typical Church Ladies, Faith Conversations for Your Real Life. I'm Vicki, and each week I am joined with my fellow workers in the vineyard, Anne and Karen, to break open the Sunday scriptures and talk about life and faith and everything in between. Join your Not Typical Church Ladies on this journey each week. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the fifth week of Lent, and we have a special guest with us today. Spontaneous cameo by our pastor, Father Rob. (laughs) Well, I'm glad to be here, and I love this trinity of my three (laughs) friends, Anne, Vicki, and Karen, and I hope you've been enjoying the several weeks that we're going through in Lent enlightenment and their wisdom We've got a lot of wisdom with these three women and you know it's making me think when jesus rose from the dead he came to a lady first mary and she was the disciple to the disciples so i am so grateful to have these three <laughs> ladies be the disciples among us in our community Oh, God bless you. them, and uh, up. I hope you're in a prayerful Lent, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the services and in the Easter season. Bless you all. So that was- now that our special guest has left us to go do all his many works that he has to do, because um, we are in the fifth Sunday of Lent, which means we are about to enter Holy Week, and the fifth Sunday of Lent did not play this year. It came in with lots of things for us to think about and talk about and just pray with. So Mm -hmm. let's get started. Any first thoughts that popped into any, both either of your heads looking at this all? I mean, overall, I just, I'm back on Jesus's humanity in the gospel. And I'm going to jump to the gospel. Sorry. Um, I always hoping you would. I was hoping you would. Okay, good. Um, You know, he's, we know he's fully divine and fully God and fully human, but like the humanity of the story, he's like, do I, what do I do? <laughs> do I ask God to, you know, I'm, I'm troubled. He says, I'm troubled now. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Like, he's just like, I, I don't it's know. We all had that prayer. We have all yeah. had that. Moment. Every yes. one of us had the moment where we're like, God, just take this. Like, I do not want to be in this place. Yeah. Like, right now, you know, just take it. Yeah. And I just, uh, yeah. in uh, in all of our, um, my years, you know, I've, I've really grown to love, like, the different images of Jesus. And, and I really... I'm really in love with his humanity because it just, it, I relate to that. Right. And, and probably many of us do, but like to see him angry a couple of weeks ago and now he's like, Oh, this is really, Oh, this is really going to happen. You know, and just that even Jesus struggled with decisions and figuring out if this really is the right thing to do. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, I... Well, and too, he's like, you know, what, what, what touched me too is that he's not only trying to accept it for himself, he's also trying to explain it to his friends and yeah. disciples. Yeah. And like how, you know, how many times have we been in a place where we're sitting with someone who is really suffering for whatever reason, and we want to offer comfort and we want to offer hope. But sometimes we're also angry at God yeah. for whatever has happened. Um, and sometimes we don't have the answers that we want to give, or we have answers that we know are not satisfactory when you're in that place. Right. right? Yeah. And, but like, what else are we to do? Right. Yeah. That's what Jesus says. Like, well, this is, yeah. what else am I going to do? This is the, this is my purpose. Right. And, and like the last purpose. line of, of the, of the gospel it says when and when I'm lifted up from earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Everyone, everyone, mm-hmm. everyone. And he said this, indicating the kind of death that he would die. And it's like, 
the mind-blowingness of this is like he took this on for us so we could have this freedom that we've been talking about and we can have this grace that and this love from god that we've been talking about the last four weeks and it's like wow when it's put into context that you're like that you're like wow okay what are we going to do with that i think there's a difference too between like I mean, I personally am very focused on like loss right now because I'm grieving a loved one, a young young person who died. And it's just like, that's very real to me. But I think when we think about this story about the, unless a grain of wheat falls and dies, like a seed dying is not necessarily the same thing as like a person dying or a dream, well, maybe a dream dying, but like a seed was never meant to be a seed. It was meant to be a plant. Right. And it's just the seed is this thing you have to, it's the thing you have to grow through and break out of to become the thing you were really meant to be. So I think there's different ways to look at this too. You know, I mean, we're, we're talking about the Paschal mystery and we're, we're talking about um, suffering and loss and that's all that stuff is true. And then also we can look at the readings from a place of growth, Mm -hmm. which can be painful and can involve letting go, but is still, meant to be in the way that I think yeah. our pain and our loss and our suffering and violence and all like that was never meant to be. Jesus came to heal that. But the seed dying was kind of part of the plan all along. Right. So there's just yeah. scripture is so rich and there's so many different ways that even in a small passage you can take wisdom and inspiration from it. So this is what I love about our conversations because I'm like totally literal. (laughs) And then you just throw that in there and it's like, yes, that is a whole other way of looking at it. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. You know, it's interesting because the grain of wheat story is, so I was trained in the catechesis of the good shepherd, which is a Montessori approach to religious ed for preschoolers. And it is the scripture and it's the activity you give to a child who has experienced their first loss. Oh, wow. As a way of trying to, and you have different pots, but you break open a seed and you see the small, you know, the smallness of the seed coming and it's to help them, you know, as they're working through their feelings to really look at the new life in heaven that people are given, you know, that we all pray and hope we have and to connect that point. So it's one of those scriptures we use in those situations for little, the littlest to try uh-huh. to start seeing that that life after death, that continuation, that, you know, the newness that can come. That along with the lost sheep are the two we use. And the script, you know, the parable of the lost sheep, the idea that God will find everyone and bring him back to him. So yeah. those are the two ones that we use a lot with the littlest when they experience their first loss. And, you know, it's interesting because we are preparing. We're in the last... Sunday of Lent right now and we're preparing to walk Holy Week so it seems everything that we end with Jesus starting to contemplate what he has to do and you know, he says like this is my purpose I know this was ultimately the purpose I was brought here for but it's going to be really hard like when we go back to the agony in the garden we hear it's going to be hard and he knows yeah. that and he goes in fully scared of it you know like feeling all the feels about what is about to happen to him but knowing ultimately this is what he was called to do and how hard it is to i mean how many times have we been called to something and we're like yeah no (laughs) i know better (laughs) i know better than god yeah that's not gonna that doesn't fit in my plan but and ultimately what happens we end up understanding that call and and doing what we are supposed to anyway because when I when I graduated college I was like I'm never gonna work for the Catholic Church (laughs) how long did it take uh four months (laughs) when my dad said you need to find a job now (laughs) awesome this is going to be like my starter job, just like we have starter homes. This is going to be the starter job, but it, you know, God had other plans. Yes, God did. 
thankfully, thankfully, because I'm I know, nervous. Look where we are now. I know. That's awesome. Oh. So I mean, I love that, that like, you know, you're, you, we do kind of like grow into our purpose, right? Yeah. Grow into it. And, well, and it was talking about like, yeah. that, you know? like what you were saying last week about the light, you mm -hmm. know, it's not like a flip of a switch, right? It, it grows. And, and so, and definitely I, I think I can say for all of us is who we were when we first started in ministry is we never thought we would be where we are, yeah. you know, and, and what has come. Um, but we could say that about everything in our lives too. You know, we no, were just a little seed at some point. You know, it's funny uh, being in ministry. There's so many painful days and just frustrating days sometimes and days where it's really easy to get discouraged. And, you know, it, you'd think everything would be like sunshine and rainbows working in it church office, but no, and, um, but I can honestly say you guys, I feel very grateful to have grown where I have been planted in this little pot with the two of you guys. Amen. Me too. You know, like we're getting, we might have some growing pains from time to time, but God's producing fruit and, um, it's amazing to be part of it. Well, and, and I think it's something that, oh, I'm sorry, Vicki. I just want to say, I think it has something to something to be said about the parishes that we're at you know um just a side i always say side note but like we had a staff meeting the other day and after a week of a hard week of loss within our parishes there have been so many people like you guys reaching out and just asking if we're okay yeah supporting us and so, you know, it's a blessing, not only that we've grown into who we are as a team within the last seven months. Also, we're able to do that because of the soil and the nourishment that we receive from, from the parishioners. So Vicki, were you, you? Well, and Jesus, right, gives us so many examples of how we live out because when things are hard, right. And it's not always sunshine and rainbows. And there are plenty of times where it's like, is the grass greener somewhere else? And I think even in faith, right. As a, as a person of faith, there are times that it's like, is there a, is this really where I'm supposed to be? Is this the faith that God called, you know, and that yeah. prayer when God's like, Nope, you, <laughs> like, I know it's hard right now, but you're where you need to be and you, you need to stay there. And like, Jesus was like, I know I'm supposed to do this and I don't want to, you know, it's so hard to live in those moments. Right. And I think that's where prayer and listening becomes so important or in the, you know, in those really hard decisions of, do I stay, do I go, be it career, be it where your church is, be it any of those things, like really taking that time to prayerfully you know, listen to God in the chaos of ever all the pain and suffering we might have going on in our lives, because that's what Jesus, Jesus kept bringing it to the father. And guess what? The answer was, no, this is your purpose. This is what I've sent you to do. And mm -hmm. he had to keep accepting that even in the hardship of being like, oh, this is going to be so hard. Yeah. And we get like a little snapshot of that in the second reading too, where, mm -hmm. um, in Hebrews, Paul's writing, like, in the days when Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like, praying through the cries and the tears. Like, Jesus, he didn't just do that once at Gethsemane. He, How many times, how many moments in his life in prayer did Jesus wrestle with God? God's call for him and what it was going to mean and how he came to understand it, right? But, like, once he did it was in his heart and he had his purpose, right? So like first reading the new covenant, I'm going to write it in their hearts, right? Like Jesus had God's, God's call for him written on his heart. Um, and that's where that surety comes from. Our surety comes from God. Cause when you spent that time, when you know, you know, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Like I said, he, he didn't, the, this week's readings did not come to play. It came to really push mm -hmm. 
you know, push you to and get us, I think, prepared in a way for what's coming next in Holy yeah. Week. Yeah. Bring yourself. Holy Week is coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sense of conviction when we know where God is leading. And it's hard. Like, I, I know I keep talking about society and, and what society says, what church says, but there's so many conflicting, like it's, it's not going to be an easy choice. I mean, we have, we have to sit in that quiet. We have to sit in prayer. We have to not only listen, but we have to hear. <laughs> and, you know, last week we talked about making a conscious decision to move from the darkness to the light. Like, we need to make that conscious decision to sit in quiet and contemplate where we are because society is telling us one thing and and as humans we're going to want to do we know better right (laughs) so you know especially moving into holy week taking this time to sit with and wrestle um really important before we get into Palm Sunday and then Holy Week. Right. Because a life of love was never meant to be painless, right? Like we all, everything, you know, like social media and society. I mean, I think we have this expectation that like, we're supposed to be happy all the time and things are supposed to be easy all the time. And they're, they're just not, that's not, but right, like we're, we're if we're a seed and we're going to grow and we're going to bear fruit, we're going to be in a state of constant change and constant letting go. And um, there's going to be joy and there's going to be growth and there's going to be fruit, but it, it isn't going to be easy. It's never it was never meant to be. It just got me thinking about my driveway. I don't know why, but I'm going to tell I'll, I'll, I know why. So I'm going to tell you, like, does anybody else have cracks in their driveway and like little pieces of grass end up popping through. And I just think how hard that little piece of grass had to work. Right. Earned it. <laughs> you know, you re- and then I feel bad when I pluck it. Cause I'm like, Oh, you work so hard. But I mean, isn't that and exactly what you were just saying? Like sometimes we're going to have like a lot of fertile soil and, and it's going to be like, yeah, we're good to go. And then other times we're going to be in the cement and we're just going to have to work. Mm-hmm. harder um but yeah god didn't say it was going to be easy and god didn't come to like condemn us like god came to give us these amazing joys and gifts in our lives um but again it's not just going to be handed to us so so when you were saying that about the driveway uh there's a great poem called the rose that grew from concrete and yeah. it's super old now, but I feel like it won a bunch of awards. It was published posthumously. And, but it's that whole thing about like the rose that grew where no one thought it could grow. And like wherever you're planted, it might not be what you think is the perfect place, but ultimately there's a purpose for why you're there at that moment and that time and what you're doing. Hmm. All right. Let's all be a seed. (laughs) We are seeds. We can do this. We're almost there. We're almost there. But with that, we are about to enter Holy Week um, and we are going to be doing some mini episodes coming up for each part of Holy Week to journey with you and be along with you. But um, any final thoughts before, as we finish up our fifth Sunday of Lent? No. All right. Well, we will see you guys all back next week as we start Holy Week on Palm Sunday. So thank you both again for being with me on this journey. And we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye. On behalf of Anne, Karen, and myself, thank you again for listening to this episode of Faith Conversations for Your Real Life. Please make sure to subscribe to wherever you're listening or watching this episode. You can find the readings linked in the description box below. And we can't wait to see you again next time on Faith Conversations for Your Real Life. With your favorite not-so-typical church ladies.